G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we continue our off-season series of projecting three years into the future and trying to have a stab at uh, what each individual team in the AFL's best 22 is likely to look like three years from now. So the idea is to remove players who are likely to be retired and try and project the development of players that are currently on the list. Obviously, the, the limitation of this analysis is that uh, we don't know what trades are going to happen and what draft picks are going to likely be uh, entering various clubs. However, uh, the point of it is more so to project how mature a list might be in three years, how vulnerable it will be to retirements, etc., and uh, what their strengths and weaknesses are, I guess, from a positional point of view. So today we're doing the Hawthorne Football Club. I've worked through all, all the teams in reverse alphabetical order once again from the Western Bulldogs to now Hawthorne. And uh, I also did a similar video series looking at their best 22s for 2024, which you can also find as a different playlist on this channel. So before I crack into the Hawthorne Football Club, do you do me a favor and consider subscribing to the channel. We do lots of AFL content. Almost all of it is AFL content, and we dabble a little bit with cricket in the off-season as well. But if you consider subscribing, it would really help me out. So today, like I said, we're going to be doing the Hawthorne Football Club, and this one will be an interesting one in the sense that they've got a very young list, and so projecting their best 22 or 24, it might not actually be that different. However, there are still going to be some retirements to consider, and uh, maybe some positional changes as well. So usually how I start these videos is I go through the players that I think will definitely not be on the list in three years' time, specifically round one of 2027 is kind of the ballpark of what we're aiming for uh, in terms of age and stuff like that. So... Uh, with Hawthorne, you know, there's been some clubs where I've had like eight to ten potential retirements over three years. We've probably got four for Hawthorne here. Specifically, Luke Bruce, who will be 36, Jack Gunston, who will be 35, Chad Wingard, who will be 33, and Sam Frost at 33, I also uh, got rid of. However, I will name the players that are over 30 that I'm keeping in the squad. One of them is James Sicily. He will be 32 by round one. And uh, my logic here is I just feel like James Sicily could play a little bit longer than some of those other players. Again, I'm speculating. This whole video is speculation, but I think James Sicily is likely to still be around. Carl Amon at 31. Same thing with Jarman Impey. They'll both be 31. I think they'll be around. Same with Mabio Chol, who will be 30 that year, as will Blake Hardwick. So those are the retained veterans. And again, not too many veterans on the list, even three years from now. So with that all in mind, let's have a stab at their best 22 or 24. So I'll get it up on the screen now and uh, you can see that there's a fair bit going on. If you haven't watched the other videos in this series, I will explain what you're looking at here. Obviously, it's the best 22 slash 24. The colors simply indicate my confidence to which they are likely to still be in the best 22 in three years' time. Now, it is a little bit arbitrary. I wouldn't get too caught up in it. And there's probably been some double standards where I've uh, been inconsistent through videos of what's green and what's yellow. Uh, but my idea is that I'm pretty confident about the green ones still being uh, A, around and B, in the best 22. And if they're yellow, I'm a little bit less sure that they're not going to be overtaken. Um, but there's a lot of factors to consider with that sort of thing, like positional depth and etc. So that, that's what the colors mean. The numbers, uh, the first number is their age by round one of the 2027 season. And the second number, the slash, is uh, how many games I roughly estimate they will have played by then. And uh, as a general rule, if they're best 22 player over three years, I estimate 20 games a season, that equals 60. That allows for injury and suspension. If they're a project player, I'd probably just scale down the number a little bit. Or if they're just currently on the fringe or even a developing young player, uh, they probably would have played less. So I've just had a rough estimate. And the idea is to get a feel for how mature this list is um, and before we can really forecast how good this team will be in three years. So let's start with the back line as we always do. And I've got four players I'm pretty damn confident will still be there. Blake Hardwick, James Sicily, Jack Scrimshaw, quite confident. Uh, and Josh Weddle. Now, Josh Weddle, the only question mark there is, uh, I believe there's a bit of talk he might transition into a midfield role. Uh, I'm not too sure about that, but at the very worst, he could probably play like a third tall defense, uh, defensive role. Maybe not third tall. He's about 190, um, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, nonetheless, a, a pretty good prospect that I'm confident will be in the team one way or another. GF, I've currently got in yellow there. Um, that's, you know, upon reflection, I might change that to green by the time I actually put this graphic up uh, because, you know, he, if, comparing him and Scrimshaw, they're probably both likely to be best 22 in three years. So I will change that. Blank is an interesting one as well. Uh, just because he's not, you know, guaranteed to be in the best 22 by then, but probably right now, their next best key position defender. If I was Hawks, I'd probably be looking to adding at least another mature one. In this case, Frost is not available. And Will McCabe is probably still a little bit young at 21, but he could be in there or they could trade someone in. So that was my rough attempt at their back line. It's not too different from how I expect them to line up in 2024. 
Let's talk about the midfield. Again, not too much movement here. Uh, Josh Ward and Carl Amon on the wings. I'm confident about Ward being there. Amon, again, it's just a case of whether he gets pushed out rather than anything else at 31. Is he still going to be the same player? Maybe, maybe. Will Day, by that point, will be in the peak of his career at 25. So we can see that he and Newcomb, again, 25 and roughly 100 games of experience, will probably be really uh, consistent AFL midfielders. That's what I expect anyway. And I've just got Cam McKenzie slightly ousting James Warple. I think McKenzie is pretty high-end talent. I really like the look of him. And I think in three years' time, he might have just sidelined James Warple a little bit, who I still have on the bench. So it's a pretty damn good midfield, and we're not seeing too much movement in and out of that midfield. Forward line, again, we talked about the forward line being a potential real strength, not only in three years, but like as soon as next year. Uh, but we will see you know, more mature Nick Watson at 22, for instance. Dylan Moore, still in his prime. Mitch Lewis at 28 has the potential to be a real, uh, real gun forward of the competition, I think, and this will be in his prime. So uh, that bodes well. Maybe your Chol, again, I'm not too sure if he's going to be there. Um, you know, he might get beaten by somebody else. They might trade in, you know, Jamari Yugo Hagen or something like that. Who really knows? Again, I, I think Chol is pretty handy and should be best 22 but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Ginevan, again, I'm a little bit less confident on Ginevan. Uh, maybe that's just down to personal opinion. I don't really see you know, real star potential, although he has flirted with best form um, in his two years at Collingwood, I think it was. His first season was better than his second. He could still be there, but again, I wouldn't be completely shocked if Hawthorne do find a better alternative. Whereas by comparison, Connor McDonald, I'm very confident will be there. I think he's, I think he's a better player, to be honest. Uh, Ned Reeves is the ruck. I see no obvious contenders for that. Maybe Lloyd Meek, but and Reeves is especially at 209 centimeters when he fills out and is like, well, not necessarily fill out, but when he matures his body at 28, I think he's still going to be the man. So then we just got a bunch of bench options, um, and it's a little bit hard to split some of these as well. I've got Impy still on that team. I just sidelined him um, just because of his age a little bit, but he'll still probably be around the mix. Seamus Mitchell at 24 will be around the mark. I talked about Warple already. Finn McGuinness could be in this team. Uh, again, I'm not too sure exactly what the evolution of Finn McGuinness is as a footballer. We know he's a good tagger at the moment. It's going to be a competitive and deep midfield. Does he stay a tagger? Yeah, probably. I'm not too sure. Hawks fans, let me know in the comments. Connor Nash at 28 will be there as a, some mature, big-bodied experience. But again, you look at some of these midfielders, and um, considering the, the fact that McKenzie and Ward are already kind of probably going to be in their best 22, or at least given games in 2024, they're going to accumulate some experience. So um, while it's a young midfield, even in three years, it'll still have a fair bit of experience, you'd think. Sam Butler is probably the next forward off the rank as well. Uh, he's played a little bit at, at AFL level. I want to say about 17 games uh, and probably just in the mix as a depth player. So we'll talk about some of the players I left out. And again, it's, it's a little bit tough because with the Hawks, you have a lot of uh, young prospects outside the 22 sort of competing for the same spots. But Bailey McDonald was one of them. I just didn't quite have him making it. Same with Massimo D'Ambrosio. If we're, if we're talking about him competing for a half-back spot, I think the competition there is pretty rife. Will McCabe is only outside of this 22 because he's 21 and might not be as, as ready-made as a blank who's at 26. Do they go with a three-tall option legitimately? Is Weddle a midfielder? They could, they could flirt with that mix a little bit. Harry Morrison was another one, as well as Bodie Ryan. Again, I'm just not not too sure, but they just didn't quite make the cut. Cooper Stevens and Henry Huspite were probably the midfielders I just left out of this. Uh, again, I just don't think they have the same potential as the guys that are in this 24. Um, however, particularly with the case of Huspite, I see the potential naturally. D uh, Denver Granger Barras is a player I left out. Again, I just don't know exactly how he's going to evolve. Uh, ideally as a key forward, but I didn't have more confidence in him making it as a key forward than Mubby or Chol, so I've just left him out. There's a few developing tools as well, like Max Ramsden and uh, Clay Tucker and Lloyd Mee. So again, it's a little bit hard to forecast. Colch Deer as well. A couple of small forwards as well. Jack O'Sullivan, and I think Josh Bennett, if I'm not mistaken, is a small forward. Forgive me, I don't know too much about him. Uh, Hawks fans, but naturally considering the strength of that forward line regardless uh, I think it is going to be very competitive for those kinds of types to break in and ouster Ginevan or ouster Nick Watson I just I wouldn't bet on it right now So that's my take on the Hawthorne Football Club in terms of projecting their best 22. How good could they be? You know, pretty damn good, particularly that midfield and forward line. That's a real strength I'd probably look to reinforce the tall defensive options. You know, does Blank become a become a gun? He could by the time he's 26, um, but naturally I still think Getting one uh, and maybe freeing up Sicily from a true key back position, maybe make him a third tall. I think they can experiment with that mix a little bit. Um, but naturally, they, they're sort of in a position where they've got some really quality young mids and forwards who can f like battle for those spots and the cream will rise to the top. And I think they'll be a strong team within three years, although still relatively inexperienced. 
maybe not inexperienced, but relatively young. They're going to be experienced players for their age, if that makes sense, uh, which bodes well for the Hawthorne Footy Club. So, yeah, I would expect finals within three years for Hawthorne, absolutely. But let me know in the comments what you agree with or disagree with from this video. Hawks fan, uh, as always, I invite you to fill in a few blanks for me. Uh, what are some young guns that you think will rise to the top and uh, make this 24? But as always, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed to the channel if you are. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.